and now it's time for us to truly be raised up in consciousness and in spirit and in the consciousness of light and love, please help me welcome our pastor, Reverend John Scott. Thank you, Carol. You do indeed raise me up. Good morning, worldwide spiritual family. It is a joy for me to wish you and your loved ones a very happy Easter, a happy flower-filled spring, a happy, joyous awakening to your spiritual magnificence, a happy you in all that that means in the consciousness of being raised up to a higher level of knowing and of loving and of being who you came here to be on your divine mission to represent God in all its glory. The Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 4, brings us today's encouragement from across the centuries, and it has powerful implications for every one of us this Easter morning. I'm sure that 9 out of 10 people sharing this Easter celebration with us at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living already know the story but let me just refresh your memory. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the, uh, from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. End of that scripture. You know, my friends, every Easter when I read this story, I am flooded with a deep, deep admiration for the role women play in all our lives. It's always the women who take care of things, isn't it? They take care of things in times of celebration, and they take care of things in times of sorrow and crisis. They bring us into the world, attending to all the details of childbirth and child rearing. They shoulder all the responsibilities of keeping the family together and making certain children grow in grace and in truth. And when it comes to the end of this expression on this plane of activity, Again, we have to lean on them and call on their strength to take care of business. God bless the women. They raise us up. And so it's the woman, my friends, who went to the tomb that first Easter morning. Can you just picture them, their cloaks drawn closely around them against the early morning chill, veils perhaps covering their tear-stained faces, heads bowed in grief, but here's the first important lesson of that first Easter. They looked up. They looked up. Look up, my friends. If you allow the appearances of so-called obstacles to weigh you down so that your head is bowed under the load, you cannot see anything but the dirt and the stones and the rubble at your feet. Look up, and then you look up, you prepare to rise up because you can see the blue skies and the promise of the early dawn. And you can gather enough strength to face the coming day. When you look up, as Carol read from Ernest Holmes' 365 Science of Mind this morning, 
you can, and I quote, definitely and deliberately let go of every lost hope, every fear of want, every sense of lack, every hurt, and prepare to leave the tomb of doubt and enter the sanctuary of certainty. End of quote. And so on this Easter morning, my friends, I invite you to join us. Join us. As we, as we enter the sanctuary, sanctuary of certainty, certainty which is the which temple, is the temple of, of light, center of spiritual living. And know, and know that if you are looking this morning for the Christ, the Christ that your soul longs to experience, you have come to the right place. Are there seemingly immovable obstacles barring you from attaining your goals in life? Is there a way to hurt that has kept you entombed in unforgiveness? Has a diagnosis obliterated the light of hope and filled you with dread? Do you find yourself saying, I don't know what to do? Or as we say in Jamaica, me no know what to do. Everywhere me turn, maka juk me. If that is your story, then this morning, I invite you to look up in consciousness and to discover the truth that will free you from the entombment of doubt and fear and self-negation. There is a beautiful song in our Science of Mind hymnal that tells us where to find the Christ. The Christ that the woman sought that first Easter morning. The Christ that your soul longs for and the truth and the light for which you look. That song goes something like this. It's titled the indwelling spirit. Go not, my soul, in search of him. Thou wilt not find him there, nor in the depths of shadows dim, or heights of upper Not in far off realms of space, the spirit has its throne. In every heart it findeth place and waiteth. Not thy God near yonder star, nor search beyond the sun. The God of love is where you are. You are the image of God. So wander not in search of him, but to thyself repose where silent reverence reigns within and thy awareness knows. Wander not in search of him, my friends. The implications of that empty tomb are great and far-reaching for each of us this Easter morning as we seek to stay connected, connected with each other and connected with God in a world that appears to be pushing us apart with its demands that we keep our distance. In a very real sense, the Easter story is our story. It is the story of our personal journey, the story of our own overcoming. It evidences the function of a principle that we may have overlooked in our evaluation of ourselves and in our search for the meaning in our own lives. You see, as religious scientists, we do not hold the orthodox view that Easter is some kind of passport to another world. For us, it is rather a quality 
of perception for this world and how we live in it. How we live in this world, my friends, right here and right now. Are our lives worthy of that life of the way shower that said, follow me, walk in my way? We must therefore view the events of the first Easter against the backdrop of Jesus' teaching that we are divine. Remember, he taught that life is not is for living. It is not for dying. And he said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10, verse 10. He taught that life is lived from within out and that there is great depth in the life within you. We may not understand the depth and perhaps that depth is truly unknowable. You know, I used to think that perhaps the resurrection might have involved the creation of some kind of sleight of hand or contrived illusion until I attended a workshop a few years ago with motivational life coach Anthony Robbins. At that workshop, I did the fire walk. This means that I walked in my bare feet across a 10-foot pit of coals hot enough to smelt steel. My takeaway from that experience was that if after just a few hours of mental preparation, I could walk barefooted on white hot coals, then surely Jesus could have learned how to allow his electromagnetic and electrodynamic body, which is eternal and indestructible, to specify, specialize itself anew in his corporeal body. I don't really understand how, but then I don't really understand the mystery of the seed and the renewal of spring either, or why bougainvilleas bloom more profusely the drier the time of year is. I don't really understand it, but I am happy to live in the mystery, and I am grateful for the annual splendor and beauty. The wonderful part of life really is that there is meaning for us on any level of consciousness upon which we find ourselves. And this is the beauty of the Bible as well. Bible stories can be read at the literal level or at increasingly higher levels of understanding that the stories therein are really the stories about us and how we might live our life, our lives in the way that the, the way Shore demonstrated. Early New Thought luminary Eric Butterworth, in a wonderful book titled Discover the Power Within You, writes, and I quote, it is important to remember that Jesus was on the road of overcoming right up to the very end, which was a new beginning. When he said, follow me and come after me, he was talking as a big brother who knew he was not only pursuing his goal, but making a trail for each of us to follow. Quote, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, verse 3. He is saying then, follow me into a, a greater awareness of the truth by which you can see and demonstrate higher and higher overtones of the law. Unquote. This is a level of consciousness in which you see with the eyes of spirit. A level of consciousness which enables you to to add to your five sensory experience of the world a deeper inner God sense which sees beyond mere matter so that you see with the eyes of God. Easter therefore deals not only with the victory of life over death but with the power to go beyond the end of things to a new opportunity and a new vision of overcoming. What a message for us at this special time in our history. What a message if we can just join in consciousness in knowing that there is more, that we were born to be great and to experience our spiritual magnificence. Jesus came to prove that we can. We can rise, and as we rise above the apparent limitations of this time, by rolling away the stone of uncertainty from our consciousness, 
we find in our fellow human beings the resurrected and divine and God-intended perfection that is at the heart of every single living being. This is the keynote of the great demonstration of Easter, my friends, which Jesus did. You are divine. No matter what you have thought of yourself, no matter what you have done in your life or with it, no matter how limited your experience has seemed to be up to now, you are divine. There's a wonderful story that illustrates the truth that we have to be who we were created to be. It is titled, The Eagle. A farmer found a baby eagle on the soft leaves in the forest floor. It had fallen from its nest. And so picking it up gently, he carried it back to the farmyard and put it in the chicken run among the chickens. As you may imagine, the baby eagle grew day by day, doing what chickens do, pecking in the pebbles and the dirt of the, of the barnyard, clucking contentedly, and hoping and sometimes squabbling among themselves regarding who would be invited for Sunday dinner at the farmer and, far and, the, and his wife's home on Sunday. But one day, something miraculous happened. The eagle looked up from his pecking with the chickens, and there, soaring above the clouds, was the most magnificent sight he had ever seen, an eagle in full flight. And he knew in his heart that this was his destiny. He looked up and knew that he was made for greater and greater things. And so he said to the mother hen, you know, I think I belong up there. That is my destiny. And she said, ah, kick, 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 no, you're a chicken. You better just try to be a good chicken so the farmer and his wife invite you to dinner. Kick, 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 kick. But our eagle was not to be dissuaded. Every day he clambered up onto the, the wooden railings of the barnyard fence and launched himself for the sky. And every day he came crashing down to earth. As the chickens laughed, ah, <laughs> you're a chicken. You're not even a best dressed chicken. You'll never get invited to dinner. But you know, friends, our eagle kept practicing. And what happens when we practice? We get stronger and stronger and stronger. Which is why I invite you, don't let a day go by without your praying without you are exercising your spiritual wings so that you too can soar to the attainment of your glory and your spiritual magnificence. So one Easter Sunday morning early, the farmer came to invite another chicken for Easter Sunday dinner. And at that moment, the young eagle clambered up onto the crossbars of the barnyard fence and he launched his wings and soared up into the heavens to attain his destiny and to achieve and demonstrate his magnificence. Nothing can keep you bound in the barnyard of human ignorance. You are not a chicken. You don't have to spend your life pecking among the pebbles and the dirt because yours is a glorious destiny. The destiny that Jesus the way shower, Jesus the Christ did, son of all of us, the son of God and the brother and sister of all of us, that destiny that Jesus embraced and demonstrated is ours. If we will but look up and find that soaring above all the obstacles of five sensory limitation, is our spiritual destiny to reveal God, to live God, to be God as Jesus intended us to be. Isaiah 40, 31 says, they that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar as with eagle's wings. They will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. End of that scripture.
Every one of us must take that giant step in consciousness from here into eternity. This is not the impossible task that it might appear to be, my friends. We do it here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living every time we do a spiritual mind treatment. For in this formula for affirmative prayer, we convince ourselves that all the spiritual qualities and attributes are rooted in us, in the divinity of each one of us. Dwell in this consciousness for even a few moments and wonderful things will happen. There is a recharging of every cell of the body. And if you are really still, and if you really believe, all things are possible. So this brings me to your assignment. It's an assignment for this week, but it is also an assignment for your life. Your mission should you decide to undertake it, is to pause at least three times during your day. Take a piece of paper and write the following. I look up and I am triumphant over all obstacles. I look up and I am triumphant over all apparent obstacles. I've inserted the word apparent. I look up and I triumph over all apparent obstacles. And then take a deep centering breath and continue with what you were doing. And yes, I said write it by hand on a notepad. I know it is much easier to use whatever device you have at hand, but there is a neurological link between W-R-I-I-T-I-N-G and R-I-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. Writing and, and writing. So, so I want you to make the effort. It's an exercise, and exercise calls for effort. I must remember that tomorrow morning. But after practicing the centering exercise regularly, you will begin to feel a new burst of confidence, a new surge of faith, a new flow of ideas, a new releasement of strength. You will feel awake and aware and resurrected above the challenges of your day. Mark you, I'm not kidding you, after the brief centering moments, you will still return to your three-dimensional time-bound experience. You will still be facing the incomplete things that need to be done, the children to be organized for online school, the work deadlines to be met, the social and financial obligations, etc. But you will face them with a new consciousness, a new fearlessness, that you are living in the depth of the spirit in which you are alive, following the way that Jesus showed. The way that Jesus called the life more abundant. Butterworth puts it this way, quote, Jesus demonstrated that life is not an experience of dying. Life is for growing and unfolding for experiencing a deeper and deeper awareness of God's presence and of his perfect life. Anything you will ever be, you already are. The greatness of the infinite is already involved in you. Sleeping within you is a strong, capable, confident, dynamic person. The person you long to be. End quote. I would add the person that God intended you to be. So my friends, today, as millions of people throughout the Christian world proclaim the words, He is risen, hallelujah, He is risen. Let those words have a new meaning for you. The meaning that you too can rise up if you will but look up and embrace your spiritual magnificence. Looking up in consciousness into the spirit in dwelling. And you can see beyond appearances, the stones of human limitation will roll away. And you will see from the divinity within you that every person is divine. Waiting for that Christ consciousness. Waiting for the flower that is in the bud to open on the vine that is God and bear fruit 
to the everlasting honor and glory of that which called us into being and which created us in its image and the likeness of its perfection. It is Easter. It is your story. He is risen in you and me and all humanity. In fact, he is risen in all of life. Hallelujah and happy Easter. <laughs>